Good morning. Jay with Bitten by Books, Book Bites, and Great Scott Audio Productions. This is going to be the second of the last two Book Bites that I'll be doing. Uh, the first of which will be Raymond E. Feist's Magician Apprentice. Um, it's a huge, huge, huge ongoing series um, called the Rift War Saga, and it, it evolves over time. The first three books of the Rift War Saga and then there are, I believe, I want to say there's nine to twelve more books after the first three. So there's a huge, huge number of books. They're all wonderful. They're all fantastic. Uh, the entire series starts off with Magician Apprentice. Um, I'm going to read a little ways in uh, because the setup takes a while. It's fantastic, but it's fantasy fair, so you've got your setup of your um, your rather unknown character coming to the forefront and and gaining notoriety and that sort of thing and um, not really auspicious beginnings for our main here, character here Pug uh, he is a magician's apprentice and he's not really good at it and he can't figure out why um, we're gonna kinda get into a meaty part where there's some good action and um, so let's go take a ride shall we as he reached the princess's horse, a scream sounded from the other side of the hill. He dropped the princess's saddle and raced to the crest, and, when he cleared the ridge, stopped in shock. The hair on his neck and arms stood on end. The princess was running, and close in pursuit were a pair of trolls. Trolls usually didn't venture this far from the forest, and Pug was unprepared for the sight of them. They were very human-like, but short and broad, with long, thick arms that hung nearly to the ground. They ran on all fours as often as not, looking like some comic parody of an ape, their bodies covered in thick gray hide, and their lips drawn back, revealing long fangs. The ugly creatures rarely troubled a group of humans, but they would attack a lone traveler from time to time. Pug hesitated for a moment, pulling his sling from his belt and loading a stone. Then he charged down the hill, whirling his sling above his head. The creatures had nearly overtaken the princess when he let fly with a stone. It caught the foremost troll in the side of the head, knocking it full into a full somersault. The second stumbled into it, and both went down in a tangle. Pug stopped as they regained their feet, their attention diverted from Carline to their attacker. They roared at Pug, then charged. Pug ran back up the hill. He knew that if he could reach the horses, he could outrun them, circle around for the girl, and be safely away. He looked over his shoulder and saw them coming, huge canine teeth bared, long foreclaws tearing up the ground. Downwind, he could smell their rank, rotting meat odor. He cleared the top of the hill, his breath coming in ragged gasps. His heart skipped as he saw that the horses had wandered across the stream and were twenty yards further away than before. Plunging down the hill, he had hoped the difference would not prove fatal. He could hear the trolls behind him as he entered the stream at a full run. The water was shallow here, but it still slowed him down. Splashing through the stream, he caught his foot on a stone and fell. He threw his arms forward and broke his fall with his hands, keeping his head above water. Shock ran through his arms as he tried to regain his feet. He stumbled again and turned as the trolls approached the water's edge. They howled at the sight of their tormentor stumbling in the water and paused for a moment. Pug felt blind terror as he struggled with numb fingers to put a stone in his sling. He fumbled and dropped the sling, and the stream carried it away. Pug felt a scream building in his throat. As the trolls entered the water, a flash of light exploded behind Pug's eyes. A searing pain ripped across his forehead as letters of gray seemed to appear in his mind. They were familiar to Pug, from a scroll that Coolgan had showed him several times. Without thinking, he mouthed the incantation, each word vanishing from his mind's eye as he spoke it. When he reached the last word, the pain stopped, and a loud roar sounded from before him. He opened his eyes and saw the two trolls writhing in the water, their eyes wide with agony as they thrashed about helplessly, screaming and groaning. Dragging himself out of the water, Pug watched while the creatures struggled. 
They were making choking and spluttering noises now as they flopped about. After a moment, one shook and stopped moving, lying face down in the water. The second took a few minutes longer to die, but, like its companion, it also drowned, unable to keep its head above the shallow water. Feeling lightheaded and weak, Pug recrossed the stream. His mind was numb, and everything seemed hazy and disjointed. He stopped after he had taken a few steps, remembering the horses. He looked about and could see nothing of the animals. They must have run off when they caught wind of the trolls, and would be way... <clears throat> we ought be on the way to a safe pasture. Pug resumed his walk to where the princess had been. He topped the hillock and looked around. She was nowhere in sight, so he headed for the overturned basket of food. He was having trouble thinking, and he was ravenous. He knew he should be doing or thinking about something, but all he could sort out of the kaleidoscope of his thoughts was food. Dropping to his knees, he picked up a wedge of cheese and stuffed it in his mouth. A half-spilled bottle of wine lay nearby, and he washed the cheese down with it. The rich cheese and piquant white wine revived him, and he felt his mind clearing. He ripped a piece of bread from a loaf and chewed on it while trying to put his thoughts in order. As Pug recalled events, one thing stood out. Somehow he had managed to cast a magic spell. What's more, he had done so without the aid of a book, scroll, or device. He was not sure, but he se that seemed somehow strange. His thoughts turned hazy again. More than anything, he wanted to lie down and to sleep. But as he chewed his, chewed his food, a thought pushed through the crazy quilt of his impressions. The princess. We'll leave it there. Do yourself a favor. Give these a try. If you're not a big, huge fan of high fantasy, these really are, I mean, in a way they're Tolkien-esque, but they really do, they grab you, they pull you in. Pug and his friend Thomas and the cast of characters is phenomenal. <clears throat> and the future that this young boy has in store for him is beyond what you could possibly imagine. Uh, so do do yourself a favor, go grab Magician Apprentice, first book in Rift War Saga, and then just head to Raymond's site and check out what they've got. The last book bites I'm going to do for you guys is from a very, very special place. I'm going to do it on my tablet because I haven't bought the book hardback. Um, it's a book that just came out, and once again, it's not completely in the urban fantasy wheelhouse or paranormal romance or anything else. It's actually kind of a... It's a horror novel, a suspense novel, uh, by my dear friend Vicki Patterson, um, and I thought this was a fitting place to end Book Bites, with Swerve, um, a horrifying, creepy as hell novel, uh, comes from the mind of one of the most beautiful people I know, and makes you kind of wish that you could curl up and hide under a blanket forever once you read this. So we'll do that next time, for now. Take care and good day.